why don't we start off with uh, having you tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about the uh, Coalition of Independent Music. I am. Uh, I went to Georgia Tech. Okay. And and did the whole engineering thing for a while. And Sound it, engineering. No, uh, industrial engineering. <laughs> okay. I, I helped build skyscrapers <laughs> in Dallas. Right on. Hated it. I uh, didn't want to do it anymore and really loved music and wanted to be in the music business. So I packed my wife and one-year-old daughter up and we moved to Birmingham, Alabama and opened a record store called Magic Platter, All right. which we really focused on compact discs. This was right when CDs were starting to blow up and um, we opened a store with nothing but CDs, no hmm. vinyl, no, no cassettes, and we had opened it with uh, this selection that no one in that town had seen and mm -hmm. we were instantly a hit and um, we we owned that record store for 14 years and uh, won best store in America twice right. uh, from NARM our, our, our um, industry uh, uh, what do you call that <laughs> yeah, thank you a trade association <laughs> uh, we closed it uh, when it became obvious that the coalition job was growing and mm -hmm. growing and growing mm -hmm. much bigger and much more important. So I had to give up something in my life and mm -hmm. we chose to close the record store and uh, which was very painful right after September 11th we closed. Um, was there anybody looking to buy the record store? Or? No, I, I didn't want to sell it uh, because I didn't want somebody running it into the ground yeah. because my yeah. name was forever uh, yeah. associated with Magic Platter. So right. we just we announced we were closing, and 18 days later, we sold the last of the office supplies and sold every fixture, wow. every poster. We sold it all off, huh. and um, that was five years ago, six all years right. ago. Now. All right. So what have you been doing since? I run the Coalition of Independent Music Stores, which um, we started in 1995 as a kind of a trade association also, mm -hmm. but mainly it was a lot of us. Uh, around the country kind of getting together and going, we're not getting treated fair by the man. Mm -hmm. And the man would not listen to individual stores, but w would listen to a collective of stores. Mm -hmm. So to get on the same uh, page as Best Buy and Target and Walmart and Coconuts and all the different large retailers, mm -hmm. we had to kind of come together as a united force so we could walk into the record labels and go, this is what we want for this record, this mm -hmm. is how we're going to support this record. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of financial support you need to give us if you want A, B, or C to happen. And it, so it was kind of they, a chain uh, with no name concept. Okay. And so, I mean, in in by being on the same page as those as those major those major distributors, does that mean that they're you're not necessarily paying the same price? They're paying a lower price. No, or? every no. Everybody's it, paying the it, same it's price. It's always about the marketing dollars. Right. It's not about the price. Okay. You know the the. Supposedly, the law is we have to all pay the same price. Right. It's how much marketing uh, money can they give you to kind of offset the price you're you're paying. I got you. So we we formed a lot of programs and all across our record stores, uh, you know, listening booth programs, genre specific mm -hmm. programs. We sell about ten different programs now, uh, everything from uh, indie hip hop to old catalog programs to you know, a full-on program uh, recommends that we only run one or two rec uh, releases a month through mm -hmm. that includes a lot of in-store play and a lot of posters up on the wall. And these are all things selected by our, re our record store owners. It's not selected by the record labels. Huh, so the record store owner decides what, lab what, what records they want to... Well, my, to explain, my office acts as a gatekeeper. Okay. We bring in the opportunities. Uh -huh. We talk to every label guy out there and we find out the release schedule and what's coming when. Mm -hmm. And then we go to them and say, you want to do something with us? Or they mm -hmm. approach us a lot of times and mm -hmm. says, we want to do something mm -hmm. with you. And we create a ballot. Gotcha. And, and then we vote it. We get all the, the store owners to vote. And after 12 years, we figured out that we had turned down 70% of the money we'd been offered because they didn't want to do something with this act right. or that act. It just didn't fit their stores. Mm -hmm. So we have this process where the coalition office uh, basically brings opportunities and then the stores decide 
uh, by majority rule mm -hmm. who what they want to mess with. Right. Well, mess. I mean, with that with that type of kind of checks and balances, I bet you end up with some very successful. Well, and a lot of integrity means, because right, I, yeah. you know I, it's very tough. I, our coalition would never have survived if I had been a dictator and told all these record stores you have to work with my taste in music. Right. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like yeah. The, these guys need to look at the ballot and go. This fits my customer profile. Mm -hmm. This definitely does not fit my customer profile. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have to go back to the labels and a lot of times tell them no, which is very disappointing because you know they've gotten us on their marketing plans. Right, right, right. Well, so I mean, with with that and kind of with with the, I mean, I know that every 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 major music fan out there is always they always have one store that they go to, and it's uh, often you know it's often not Best Buy. It's often an independent music. I was wondering what percentage of music is sold at these independent stores nationwide. Well, if you're talking about what percent of all music, you know, what, is percentage, sold there, what percentage, what percentage, what percentage, 15, of, what percentage up, of retail music? Well, up to 14, 15 percent of the overall pie, but on specific acts, mm -hmm. it could be 80 mm -hmm. percent because mm -hmm. Best Buy doesn't care about them or mm -hmm. Target doesn't mm -hmm. care about them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just not big enough. Mm -hmm. So some bands, it's a hundred percent of their music sold at indie retail. Right. A hundred percent. So really you look at the percentage and if you're gonna put me out there with, you know, you know, uh, Christina Aguilera or something, we're probably nothing. Yeah, right. We're probably right. zero percent. Right. But if you're you know, if you're gonna put me out there with, you know, a lot of indie records and a lot of underground music and a lot mm -hmm. of dance music mm -hmm. and a lot of you know indie hip-hop music mm -hmm. uh, we're a giant percent of that stuff right and right. vinyl we're almost 80 percent huh vinyl in terms of v vinyl new releases vinyl new releases yeah. huh right on